I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 19. So let's focus on verses 1 through 6. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers also twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and put a purple robe around him. And they repeatedly came up to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they were slapping his face. And Pilate went outside again and said to them, Look, I'm bringing him outside to you to let you know that I find no grounds for charging him. And then Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said to them, Behold, the man. And when the chief priests and the temple police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him, crucify. And Pilate responded, Take him and crucify him yourselves, for I find no grounds for charging him. Once again, that's John chapter 19, verses 1 through 6. You know, it's interesting how Pilate defended Jesus three times and recanted. But at the same time, Peter denied Jesus three times and then repented. You know, it's not always as important how you ran the race, but how you finished it. Pilate's defense of Jesus came from three of Pilate's most trusted sources, I believe. His law, John chapter 18, verse 38. His wife, Matthew chapter 27, verse 19. And from today's passage, his own religious omens. Now, if you visit Jerusalem, uh, you have probably seen the scourging floor. This is the spot where the Romans scourged their prisoners, many of whom were eventually crucified. And this is most likely the place where Jesus was scourged as well. You know, and etched into the stone scourging floor and its adjacent wall uh, are depictions of a torturous game that the Romans played called the King's Game. And it was a game of death and it was a game of mocking. In this game, the player would move through various brutal stages with hopes of gaining all of the vestments of a king. And it involved the casting of lots, and it was nearly impossible to compete. But if the player made it through the game, then he earned his own life. It's crucial to consider the king's game when we read the story of Jesus' trial. And if indeed the soldiers ran Jesus through this torturous game, well then, by all evidence and twisted Roman honor, Jesus would have won his freedom. And I say that because Jesus appears wearing all of the vestments that one must accumulate in order to win freedom. And it also explains why Pilate perhaps used this moment for one last attempt to defend the Lord. Well, eventually Pilate caved and Jesus was crucified. You see, God's Spirit used every angle to communicate and to persuade Pilate and, and to keep him from crucifying Jesus. But Pilate rejected the Holy Spirit's testimony. Of course, the Lord knew that he would. But Peter, on the other hand, eventually listened to God's Holy Spirit after having committed the great blasphemy of denying Jesus. Peter humbled himself and he repented. And you know, Peter became a passionate preacher of the gospel and he was eventually martyred for it. He wouldn't stand for Jesus at his trial, and yet Peter was willing to die after the resurrection. Why is that? Because Peter accepted the Holy Spirit's testimony, and he found forgiveness with Jesus. You see, the Holy Spirit only communicates one thing, and that is the only way of salvation. You see, after all, to defend Jesus, Pilate blasphemed the Holy Spirit by refusing to accept the Spirit's testimony. Consider this from Matthew chapter 12, verses 30 and 31. Anyone who is not with me is against me. Anyone who does not gather with me scatters. And because of this, I tell you, people will be forgiven every sin and every blasphemy. But blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Matthew chapter 12, verses 30 through 31. What does he mean by that? Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Well, the Holy Spirit testifies to the only way of salvation. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no man comes to the Father but through me. And even though you can reject the gospel, I suppose, as many times as it's accepted to you, if you die having rejected it, well, then what you have blasphemed is the only source of salvation. All the Holy Spirit is trying to tell everyone to do 
is to turn from their sin and surrender to Jesus. So if you say that the Holy Spirit is telling a lie, and yet the only thing that He's telling you is the only way of salvation, well, then you die without forgiveness. That's why there is no forgiveness, because He's offering the only source of it. Have you received the Holy Spirit's testimony about the gospel? And have you surrendered to the Lord and found salvation? If not, do it today. The Bible says that He will by no means clear the guilty, but at the same time, the Bible also says that all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Check us out at groundworksministries.com. Groundworks Ministries.